Well, another effect you need to know about is the Hall effect. Well, it's not actually mentioned by name in the specification or in questions, but it does come up, so let's have a look. Well, this is an effect that occurs when a conductor moves across a perpendicular to a magnetic field or with a component perpendicular to a magnetic field. So there I've drawn a region of magnetic field, the grey region, going into the screen, and the blue bar is like a blue conducting rod. Now notice it's not connected into, into a circuit, it's just there kind of on its own. And we're going to say, okay, it's moving at constant velocity v through the magnetic field. Well, the curious thing is that we're going to have um, all, that means that all the charged particles inside the metal bar, metal rod, are going to experience a force because they're moving charged particles in a magnetic field. I mean, if I just look at one electron, it is also moving at velocity v. It's being dragged through the field, isn't it, at velocity v by the bar because it's, uh, it's inside the bar. And that's true of the positive ions as well. Um, the difference, of course, is that the electrons are free to move, or some of the electrons are free to move in a uh, conductor. So, well, what's going to happen? Well, maybe you want to pause and use Fleming's left-hand rule to decide what the force on that electron would be. Well, force field current. Force uh, is what we're looking for. The field is into the screen. The current's, of course, right to left. The electron's moving left to right. Remember that that's a negatively charged particle. So that means the current's going right to left. So you should see that this, is, this electron is going to experience a downward force um, due to Fleming's left-hand rule. So it's going to make its way to the bottom of the bar. Well, the result of that, of course, is that if I just redraw the bar, that we're going to get, um, we're going to get a build-up of electrons down at the bottom of the bar. And I'll keep this, uh, it's still moving, still moving on through the field at, at velocity v. So, well, that's right. So here, so we're going to get, I'll just draw on those little minuses. So we're going to get all the electrons trying to get down there. And that's going to leave an absence of electrons, of course, at the top of the bar. So we're going to end up with a potential difference across the bar. But of course, it's going to stop building up because at some point the electrons, the magnetic force on the electrons is going to be equaled by the kind of repulsion they're feeling to be repelled back to their original position or attraction from the positive charge at the other end. So we've actually set up a potential difference across the bar there. Well, we know something, what that means. We mean, that means we've set up an electric field. And if we just look at that more closely, well, we see that if we put, if we say that's a distance d, and if we say that the potential difference that appears across the end of the bar, you know, if I put a voltmeter there um, to measure it, um, well, let's supposing that potential difference was, we call it v, well, we can write down some, a mathematical equation because what we're really saying here then is that the, when we get to this equilibrium situation that I mentioned, then we're going to have for all particles, for all the charged particles, we're going to have the magnetic force on them equal to the electric force. So if I say F mag equals F elect. And so, well, we can do a bit of maths now because the magnetic force is BQV sine theta. Theta is 90 degrees. So we get B, Q is the force on an electron, times the speed, the velocity with which they're moving through this field. And that equals the electric force. Well, what's that going to be? Well, we know that the electric field strength is going to be given by V over D. So the electric force well, F equals E times Q. So in this case, it'll be E times E. So that's what we can write in here for our f -elect. So we can say, aha, um, that equals E, E, or in other words, V over D times E. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're just going to knock that into shape a little bit. Uh, so. Well, so we've got B E V equals V E over D. The E's cancelled out. And we can rearrange that for V. And so we get this, the, the, the voltage is that set up between the ends of the plate is equal to B times V times D. And that's a well-known result. 
So that's called the Hall voltage. Although, as I mentioned earlier, you wouldn't see that name mentioned in a, in a question. Um, it's got other names. It's sometimes called the, the motive EMF. And because um, it's a slightly, although it amounts to the same thing ultimately, it's a slightly different uh, type of effect to induce EMF in Faraday's law. Um, but you don't need to need to know the details. You just need to understand this effect and what's going on. So uh, now, of course, no current's going to flow once that equilibrium is set up because of because of this um, just equilibrium situation.